Well, Tom, we've looked at a number of tools in our mm -hmm. IPM arsenal that we could use to prevent and manage pests in the landscape. What does it take to put this all together and, and really use IPM as it's meant to? What it takes is information. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that who's ever doing the gardening has to be out looking at what's going on at any given time mm -hmm. so that you know when pests are developing, when problems are developing, you properly identify them, and uh, then you can take timely con uh, corrective controls when you need to and so that just means what we call scouting or monitoring anything you want to do but it just means that you need to be out in the garden looking at what's going on and keeping okay. track of what's going on pay attention to what and, and know what does a healthy plant look like and that way exactly. you know what does it look like exactly. when something's wrong yeah and once you notice a problem um, you just have some simple tools one of the the most important things to do is use something like a a hand lens like you have right here. Mm -hmm. This can help you identify a lot of potential disease problems that you'll see on different pests. Uh, some of the small insect problems, mites, spider mites, things like that, you can see really easily with a, a 5 or 10x hand lens like this. So this really is an important tool to keep with you when mm -hmm. you want to try and identify problems. We also have other ways of monitoring pest problems um, where we use traps and, and different things. A good example would be you, something real simple, getting some double-sided sticky tape, uh -huh. wrapping it around a, a, a stem that, uh, that ha where you know you have a scale problem. Okay. And what that does is that uh, serves as a, a place that when the crawlers hatch mm -hmm. and start crawling out and settling down on new shoots, it tells you when those scales are active. And so you can use a summer oil or safer mm -hmm. soap or an insecticide to control it when they're active, they're at their most vulnerable stage at that time and, and that's the best time to control them. So you're minimizing uh, spray applications for the rest of the year because you know you've targeted for when they're vulnerable to control. Okay. Um, this is another potential method for mm -hmm. monitoring pests. These things work great in a fruit garden. This is just a, a sticky trap here. This is called a delta trap. Um, on the inside it has a, a sticky bottom and it's baited with a uh, uh, little rubber septa that has some pheromone on it. Mm -hmm. That is, uh, and a, a pheromone is just a chemical that an insect releases, a female insect releases oftentimes to attract males so that they can locate her. If you think about it, a lot of insects uh, are at their most active at night. How would they find each other? They use it with chemical um, uh, signals. We've identified the chemical signals for that specific for a specific insect, say like coddling moth, and we can put it in there and then we can tell when coddling moth activity is going on and we can target a spray to control coddling moth at that specific time versus having to use a monthly spray or some kind of calendar spray. Mm -hmm. This tells us exactly when things are happening and we know the biology of the pest and we can maybe within one or two sprays do the same thing that we might have used to have to do with five or six sprays to protect a fruit. Mm -hmm. We actually can use that pheromone in another way. Now this is a little rubber, it looks like a piece nope. of a puzzle, little but it's a puzzle. little rubber septa uh -huh. that you can put this pheromone on, the same pheromone for coddling moss, say, and then we can hook it up to a tree like that and by putting them on different trees in the in an orchard you can confuse the males they all of a sudden there's so much of that pheromone around they can't figure out where females are they're confused and we call that mating disruption that's just basically a way of preventing th those moths from finding each other and mating and laying eggs and it's a actually a fairly effective way of uh, of, of dealing with uh, uh, a problem like coddling moth or oriental fruit moth works really well in orchard situations. Okay. And a lot of people like to grow fruits in their backyard. Absolutely. So, so it's, a, it's a possibility to, to do it that way. Okay. So knowledge is really going to be our uh, greatest force in using IPM. Yes. Um, there's a lot of resources available to us. Yes. I think the first place that I would encourage any home gardener to go to is their county extension office. Mm -hmm. uh, we have really talented uh, ag agricultural educators and, and educators in horticulture that can provide a lot of information for anybody that wants to learn something about integrated pest management or horticultural practices or anything else. Uh, we also have resources at, at uh, Oklahoma State. Mm -hmm. um, we have the plant disease diagnostic lab. 
um, that can take in samples of different plants and diseases and they will diagnose whether what kind of a disease problem it is. Uh, you can send in insects and have them identified properly. Mm -hmm. um, we have, of course, the IPM website has information on it uh, that uh, we talked about earlier. And I, I mentioned ATRA a while ago. I think that's a really valuable resource as well for uh, getting uh, information on integrated pest management, organic growing, or anything else that we have. Well, Tom, thank you so much for sharing with all our viewers the different ways that we could manage pests effectively and more efficiently. Well, I really appreciate mm -hmm. having this opportunity. It's, it's, it's my favorite subject to talk about. So, <laughs> All right, well, thanks. Mm -hmm.